Hey, welcome to carlosmitchells.com again. Um, I said I'd be putting a blog up here every week or so, so this is the one for this week. Sure, okay, the first one was at the start of last week, and this is like the end of this week, but it's within the week period, so I have yet to break my New Year's resolution on that part. As for articles, well, I'll try and get something out this week as well. Last week I went up to Sydney for work for a few days, so I'm just going to run through quickly my trip to Sydney, which is mainly just the trip the flight there. Now, anyone who's flown domestically in Australia in the last few years knows that the service in the planes is pretty ordinary the, compared to what it used to be. You know, hot meals, out of the question, extra drinks, no way. But anyway, on the way up there, um, I checked in online and got that lovely message saying, we can't give you a boarding pass because we're giving you an exit row. Win. Exit row. Your legs just go. Whew, plenty of room. Now, I don't have very long legs, so they don't take that much room as it is, but for me it was great to just be able to lounge out, legs out. Oh, it's awesome. Anyway, there wasn't that many people on the flight, so there's no one sitting next to me as well. Bonus. And they actually served hot food on the plane. Now, sure, it was just a little savoury muffin, but it was hot. And at first, when they're serving the food, I could smell this really nice smell wafting through the plane, like you would on an international flight when they're serving the meal. And I thought, bloody hell, what's business class getting there? Was they getting a good deal? And then they came out with these lovely smelling hot muffins. It was awesome. So hot muffin and a beer, awesome. Not just one, they do a second round of the drinks trolley. Uh, it's almost unheard of of them actually offering you a second free drink, let alone just one. So, two drinks and a um, hot muffin, and really you've just sold me completely. Probably had a bit to do with two drinks, but that's another, another, another story. So anyway, coming into Sydney, we're just starting the descent, and it gets a little bit bouncy. Flight attendant, I've never seen anyone do this before, bolts to the back of the plane and takes their seat. Like, I've never seen anyone move so fast for their seat when the seatbelt light comes on. Normally it's like, oh yeah, we'll keep footing. It was like, whoosh, down there. So I'm guessing that he was probably a reader of the age or any paper in Australia these days. It really just, every time, you know, Qantas runs over a twig, it's suddenly, you know, oh my God, all the planes are crashing, all this sort of stuff. When really, you know, they're pretty safe. So what, an engine blows up every now and then. <laughs> Who doesn't that happen to? Anyway, so he's bolted to his seat and we're coming in and I notice that we're not going out over the ocean like what happens every other time. Now, my camera is normally in the seat pocket in front of me or in my pocket when I'm flying, just so if something cool happens, I can take the photo. This time, of course, it's in the overhead locker and I can't get it because the seat belt sign is on. So we're coming in and you get that awesome approach. Anyone's had it when they're coming to Sydney where you fly over and you have like, the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House behind it, and the city and the harbour, and it's just the most awesome view of Sydney that you can get. Like, pay for one of those scenic flights over Sydney and you probably get the view, but this way, if you're just flying in, you get it for free, providing you get the window seat, which I did, exit row, lots of leg room, great. But no photos because the camera was up there. Disappointing, but that's fine. Anyway, so land, land in Sydney, no problem, hop off. And people at work have been talking about how in Perth and in Sydney, they have self-service check-in, like completely self-service check-in for Qantas now. There's no people involved. Well, there's a few, but as little as possible. So I thought I'd just quickly check it out before I catch my train into the city. And you go up there and there's like all these space age like pods everywhere where you go in and you check in on it and then you get your bag tags and you stick your own bag tags on there. There's weighing machines and stuff there. And then you just go and dump your bag on this trolley thing, this little computer screen there. And I press that it's gone. I swear there was like two staff in the entire terminal checking people in. It was, hey look, it's a way to save money I guess on not having people. But um, the way back however, less cool. Um, Quantum City Flyer flights from 4 o'clock onwards is when you get the free drink, not the 3.30 flight. I was on the 4 o'clock flight, got to the airport earlier, got an earlier flight, why not? No, don't get a free drink. But that's right, I'm an alcoholic, yeah. But, they have these cool hot chocolate packets in Quantum's Club. Now, I normally have a drink when I'm there, normally a beer or an or something. I don't normally feel like a hot drink, but I pay the membership, so I should be able to have a hot chocolate. If I could have the hot chocolate and eat it there, there'd be no problem. But apparently, just picking up the two packets and putting them in your bag to take home for camp, apparently that's a no-no. You get greasy looks. I don't know why, but you do. So, anyone who works at the Qantas Club, don't be mean. I would have, if I hadn't drank them there, you would have had no problem. So, don't give me that greasy look just because I'm taking them home to camp. Because they've been without me for two days. And I compensate that with two hot chocolate packets. Good deal. Anyway, uh, the other thing about the trip that there is the getting from the airport to the city in, um, Sydney, the airport train, it costs you about 25 bucks return on the same day or $15 each way, um, which is pretty pricey, probably comparable to a taxi, but 
it's like nine, ten minutes and you're there. It's so convenient. They run, I don't know, every ten minutes or so, something like that. Really convenient. So, airport rail link. Uh, every city should have one. Melbourne should have one, but now we've got a freeway and a gazillion one taxis. None of which know how to drive. That's another story. Um, hotels in the city, uh, not so good. Last time I stayed at the at one hotel in Surrey Hills, and look, I'll put it this way: the hotel I stayed at this time was a shoebox, and it took almost three hours, okay, two hours and forty-five minutes to get room service to my room for a measly burger with some fries, which are just like yeah, I swear they were healthy choice chips that you buy at the supermarket, but but worse. Um, yeah, it took forever. I ordered at 7.30 and I got it just before 10. Okay, that's 2 hours and 15 minutes. But still, long time for a tiny meal. So that was the hotel I stayed this time. This was um, just opposite Central Station. The foyer, awesome. The lifts, awesome. The lobby area is awesome. The room, tiny. Not even a queen size bed, double, double bed. Tiny, really small. But, you know, I when you change the TV channel, it clicked all the time. Not the best hotel. But last time I went there, I stayed at the hotel in Surrey Hills, and I thought that was bad, because it was kind of a little bit run down on the outside, like the, um, the reception and stuff. The lift was a li little bit dodgy, a little bit scary. Um, and then the room, sure, the lock took about 10 times before you could open the door to get in. Um, the curtains were dirty and the rooms were kind of near a coat of paint, but the bed was huge, it was comfy, nice modern bathroom. Oh, the hotel near, near um, Central Station, shower curtain, hotel. I don't think so. Gross. How many bodies has that been up against? Oof. Anyway, so I gave up and that was the water on the floor. I'm not cleaning up. So anyway, hotels in Sydney so far, two hotels, neither of them that great, but the first one is probably the better one which I'd go to. I don't know, I'll try somewhere else first and then if I like it, I'll go to there. Anyway, that's enough gibbering jabbering for me for one day, so I'm just kind of doing this an out there um, blog update on what I have in my quick trip to Sydney last month there, but uh, in the meantime, I will get some more articles up there. Yeah, enjoy carlosmitchells.com, like it on Facebook, show your friends, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.